Righto team, here it is. The Royal Enfield Scram 411. So, been riding it around a fair bit today. Done some highway, done some gravel, and I've had quite a blast to be honest. A lot of mucking around. So I thought, now's a good time to do a bit of a review. So, let's get into it. Whee! Enfield! Rightio, so as you can see, it's kind of been raining, so I'm wearing my stylish raincoat. Uh, speaking of stylish, Royal Enfield Scram. Uh, I think they've done the styling quite well here. Uh, obviously it's based off the Himalayan platform, so it has a lot of things in keeping with that. So you've got, obviously, the tank, the engine, and the general frame. I believe the suspension's slightly shorter, and it's got a little bit less ground clearance, and it's got that, where's my finger gone, 19 inch front wheel. Uh, on the gravel, it actually handles pretty bloody well. Uh, you can't turn the ABS off with a switch, um, though you can confuse it by doing a burnout, as you can with most bikes. Uh, though I wouldn't recommend it though, because in doing so, it switches off the speedo, so you can't tell how fast you're going, uh, which is usually something you want to know at times. So, yeah, use that info as you will. Uh, personally, I quite like this little bike. So, as I said in my first video, my brother's looking at getting one. And um, so long as he fits it, I think um, I'd recommend it to him. Uh, though, in saying that, this bike has its check engine light on for some reason. Uh, which is probably something to do with the fact that it wasn't serviced for the first time until it ne had nearly 2,000 Ks on it. Um, which was due to some error in communication somewhere along the lines. Uh, this is a press bike, so yeah, they usually get a bit used and abused. Uh, love the styling though. Um, so my first video, so in my first video I talked about these little panels here and how I think they're generally there so Royal Enfield didn't have to get rid of this brace they've got in there because um, that holds on your oil cooler and your horn. As you can see there's a bit of corrosion on the bolts for the oil cooler. Um, which is literally just the bolts, you could swap those out um, though they are the ones that are actually on the fittings so yeah, you might want to do that or get a, someone to replace it for you if yours does the same um, but yeah, these little panels are quite cool and saying Royal Enfield um, I do find it strange how you've just got the R and the O up here um, or maybe that's meant to be in backwards E Maybe, well that makes a bit more sense, if it's meant to be a backwards E. Um, so, yeah. What can I say next? Uh, in the dirt, nice torquey engine, I love the torque on this thing. It is quite nice. Um, like, it kind of reminds me of KLR, sort of just thump, thump, thump. And, yeah, it's nothing too exciting, like... Power slides and that aren't really anything you're going to achieve, I don't think. But, yeah, it gets off the line very easily. Clutch action, typical infield, really easy to use. And it's, yeah, it's your quintessential learner bike, I think. And with the dual sport market having essentially become fully off-road, you don't have that many bikes in the lambs category or under that magical ten thousand new zealand dollar mark that can you can do a bit of this on not worry too much if you drop it so if you drop this uh you're likely to do something to your hand yeah lever maybe which i'd swap out anyway that's the reach by the way it's a decent decent reach to the clutch there so i've got tiny hands so if you've got small hands, that might be a bit a bit far for you to go. Uh, same with the uh, brake lever. Um, but yeah, it's insane. If you dropped this, uh, worst case scenario, you break a lever. Um, sort of these here might actually hit down first before you damage your tank, which I imagine they should do. Um, and then you've got these great pillion handles back here, which are also steel. Um, yeah, you could really sort of abuse this bike sort of commute on the week and on the weekend come do a bit of this 
so I'm just out in the hills around Parongia. I'm just having a blast. That's actually a great shot there. So, uh, let's do some stats. 411cc single cylinder motor. It's your typical Enfield. It's got a long stroke to it, so it's got lovely and torquey. On the highway, it will happily do 110 kilometers an hour. It takes a while to get there, being a small capacity single, but yeah, it sits there nicely. And if you're on country roads and you find an incline, uh, I find, unlike my CRF 250 Rally, which has the same peak power as this, but less torque, um, on this you don't have to downshift as much to maintain your speed. Uh, speaking of shifting, it's a five-speed gearbox, uh, which might sway you in some way or another. Uh, essentially, it is a road bike, though. It's not really a dirt bike. Uh, you've got a pretty low ground clearance there, but it does come with a factory skid plate. Uh, it's a gorgeous wee bike, though. Now, really nice low seat height. Very easy to just swing a leg over and go. Uh, what... What else can I say about this bike? It's uh, yeah, it's pretty honest. It's not going to excite you too much. It's just what it is. And I think uh, Royal Enfield can be commended for that. They've not tried to do anything too fancy. They've literally taken a Himalayan, brought it slightly closer to the ground, got rid of the big fairing that screams adventure, and they've given you this great little urban scrambler. You can potter around, easily chuck a rack on it or yeah whatever it'll do it so negatives let's talk some negatives here so as I said this bike didn't get its first service till it was at nearly 2,000 kilometers switch her on oh look the check engine light's gone off there we go nice comprehensive dash Got a clock, I believe that also acts as the tripper navigation. We'll just switch the engine off so you can hear me. I believe that also um, acts as tripper navigation, so it's run by Google Maps and it gives you turn by turn directions. Uh, nice, easy to read uh, speedo. Uh, yeah, if you get up to 160, I'll be amazed. Uh, it tells you everything you need to know. It doesn't tell you your revs, but this engine, it's not really a rev, rev beast. Uh, it'll do like 50 or 60 in first gear, uh, second it goes up to I think nearly 100, it's quite long in the tooth in the gearing, um, so you, you'll find you sort of don't really need a uh, taco, uh, it's not the kind of bike that you're really revving heaps either, so yeah, a couple of Odos, uh, well an Odo, two trip meters, gear position indicator, fuel gauge, and clock. Right, well I should probably settle back up. We'll talk about some of the uh, riding dynamics of it again. But I like this little bike. About just under eight grand, I believe, um, pricing starts at. Somewhere between seven and eight grand. It's uh, really hard to complain about, really. Right out around Mount Peronia just cruising done a bit of piece of camera just now so thought I'd wipe on my glasses so I stopped getting hit in the eyes by bugs I could put my visor down but where's the fun in that you don't get the uh, breeze in your face uh, Royal Enfield Scram so this is its sort of its alter personality alter ego uh, and I'm not going to lie, it's not really a bike for much dirt work. Yeah, this, this is about as far off road as you'd take a Scram, I think. Gravel roads, it does it quite nicely. Cruises along quite happily. But take it onto some dirt tracks and stuff, I did it a little bit earlier, and it was... The bike was capable enough to do it, the tyres are a bit of a limiting factor, but so is its ground clearance, and you can't switch the ABS off without also uh, inadvertently turning off the speedo cluster, which, yeah, not ideal really. But it happily cruises along here, 
the suspension like this is a nicely kept gravel road so i'll be fair but the suspension's not going to nail you there as far left as pass i might thanks for not running me over um and yeah it's quite comfy the seating position is quite comfy for me i'm about 175 176 centimeters tall and i enjoy this riding position it's nice it's upright it's quite neutral and the bars they're quite narrow and they're right in front of you there's you don't have huge amounts of leverage on it but you've got a nice amount which sort of works along with the geometry to sort of it's what you need it's nice and controlled you're not sort of putting in too much steering input now it's sort of got about 24 horsepower oh that rock was a hedgehog um what's the thing 24 horsepower 28 newton meters of torque i believe it's definitely got more torque than peak power and you know that when you're going say country road cruising on at 105th which is its overdrive gear um you don't typically depending on the hill size have to shift down into fourth to keep going and maintaining speed uh, whereas on my bike, the 250 Rally, you definitely have to downshift to keep it on the boil. Um, and infields tend to do that anyway. They tend to be more torque focused, more usable power. They're not trying to be anything racy. They're trying to be fun transportation and they do it bloody well. They're also quite thrifty. I've been mucking around out here for a wee while and uh, barely used any fuel oh man it'd be great to get down there for some photos but I don't want to trespass slash I don't think I'll get that gate open if I wanted to so this is sort of where the field scram shines just out for a cruise not trying to do anything too dramatic um, if you do get the ABS to stop working you can skid it around and back it in and whatnot but that's not really what this bike's about um, as a commuter i think this would be great especially if you uh get the royal enfield app going connect it in with the tripper which is an optional extra i believe um, and if you're cruising around or you need to get somewhere in the city that you don't know or if you're road tripping even um, it's well set up to do that it'll give you turn by turn directions just up here but it's on a bike that's under eight grand or under nine grand i forget what the price point is but it's just good honest fun now where it has its, it does have its weak points uh, obviously non-switchable abs low ground clearance it's not going to be an off-road monster you're not going to do the 42 traverse on this bike um, at least you're not going to have fun doing the 42 traverse on this bike um, and also it's not really well set up for standing up on the pegs and going and what i mean by that is the peg position is right in line with the uh ear box which is right underneath the saddle and unlike more dirt oriented bikes like my rally which are nice and narrow in the subframe uh, the infield sort of splays out there it gets a bit fat and it pushes your legs out um, which yeah while it kind of puts you lock your knees in uh, position um, yeah I don't call it I wouldn't call it the ideal standing up riding in the dirt bike the mirrors are also a bit yeah not amazing they blur a bit and yeah otherwise it's pretty basic but it gets the job done and it puts a smile on your face and it's a weird quirky thing with these infields they love to put a smile on your face uh, they're not incredibly exciting in terms of power or anything like that but they just go so well and it is an enjoyable bike to ride um, so if you're a learner rider i think enfield is one of the best brands if you're wanting to get a into motorcycling their bikes aren't scary 
they've got the necessary safety aids, but they have such a forgiving nature that they will really help you master motorcycling. They're great at U-turns. The clutch action is really nice. They're not particularly easy to like stall. They just go. Um, yes, there is obviously the fact that they are a cheap bike. Ooh, sheeps! One, two, three, four, six sheep. All right, now I am a farmer. Enter farmer mode. Um, where are yous going? Come on, sheepies. I'm just having it today. Just keep running into animals. So yeah, Enfields, they make some great learner bikes. If you're an experienced rider, are you going to find this tickles your fancy? Maybe, if you're trying to downgrade, if you want something a bit more basic, a bit easier to get on, um, it could be for you. But if you're coming off something with a lot of power, say a thousand, and you're sort of downsizing, you might find the power delivery a bit meh. Um, yeah, I don't know. You'd downsize to this. Probably you'd find a 650 more um, your speed. But if you like the scrambler styling, like, yes, it's not fast. Yes, it's not going to wheelie or go anything. But it does the speed limit. Open road speed limit's 100 kilometers an hour here. And it just happily rides. And being a 411cc motor, you actually pay less in registration and insurance, which, that's a good thing. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going up into some rain again, I think. Another cool thing about the Enfields is they have a lot of accessories. So, you can sort of bling up your bike as you want, you've got heaps of apparel, and I think the thing that a lot of the people don't think of when they're getting into motorcycling is community. Like, yes, there is the biker community overall, but if you buy an Enfield, there is quite a big community of Enfield motorcyclists everywhere in the world, where, say, Honda, you ride a Honda. Cool. Nobody really gives a stuff. Um, whereas Enfield, they have like one ride where one day every year Royal Enfield and all its dealerships put on rides um, like an organised group ride, you meet people, um, it all sounds awesome. And that's not something you tend to get in the low end of the motorcycle market. You tend to get that with premium brands like Triumph and KTM. KTM in particular has a huge community. But they've only got, um, they tend to have more focus on the adventure and dirt side and yeah, they're not really accessible apart from the 390 adventure. Where this, you jump on it and you're part of the infield community. And people love these little bikes, they make a nice noise, they sound like a motorbike should, they kind of look like a motorbike should. And they just, they just are. It's one of those hard things to quantify really but I put a lot of weight into the fact that you've got a community with the Royal Enfield that you don't have with a lot of other brands back on the gradifal made the mistake once of going straight down there which uh, ends quite quickly so on the gravel this bike is fine it's not going, it doesn't have the power to ski for instance, and the sort of more wiggly stuff, yeah the tyres aren't exactly amazing, but this has definitely got a major road bias, this is about as off-road as you want to take it, you can kind of kick it out a wee bit if you're willing to sort of throw the bike around, but realistically this is more a bike that you just poodle along and enjoy the ride. And I've really enjoyed my ride on this today. 
Uh, for one thing, my ass doesn't hurt. Where if I'd been riding my rally for this long, I would be on the pegs quite frequently. Uh, this is quite a sumptuous seat. <laughs> Uh, and for the other part, it's just easy. It's a really nicely balanced bike. It's got a nice balance of power to handling to thrills. Like, I don't know. There's something about MPEG, man. But yeah, this bike, I don't know. It's nice. It's just like every other MPEG. As a gateway into the motorcycling world, are going to struggle to do better than getting on an infield.